In last week's Force.com cast episode, I showed um, a way in which you can improve the uh, use of resources when uh, processing loops of different records. Um, and I got some great feedback from different people where they came up with a couple of other suggestions. So what I've done is I've taken uh, three suggestions that we'll come up with here, and I'd like to go through them in this week's episode just to kind of tie off all the different ways in which you can loop through records so that we can have really definitive answers to what, what is the quickest way to go through. Um, so what you can see in the code I've got here is that um, we've got our original three methods from last week um, with our best topping out at uh, 210 milliseconds. Um, so a very, very speedy uh, piece of code there. So Stephen Herod, um, whose Twitter handle at sherod is shown for you on the screen there, he suggested we could use the in-style syntax for our loop to maybe get a performance boost as well and to see how that compared. So uh, what we've done here is we've literally just changed it. So rather than instantiating counter variables and variables to control the size, we've just said that we're going to loop through all the contact records in contacts. Um, it's a very, very simple way of doing it. So make sure that's saved up. And uh, all we're going to do is go and into our execute apex. And we're going to execute the same apex as we did last week. And when we run this, it's going to go away. And rather than setting up the counter variables, it's just going to loop through the system. And this returns a time spent of 415 milliseconds. So again, this is a very speedy loop. Uh, it's one that we could quite happily put in production and not feel that it's going to slow down the system too much. And um, it's faster than our first two iterations on this. Um, it's not as fast as the final one. So still have the final one as perhaps our best practice if we can, but it's a very, very good syntax for doing it. And um, I personally like this style of syntax. I find it very easy to read and very clear on what we're doing. So that's uh, one method of doing it. Uh, Andy Mahood then uh, followed up in the same uh, conversation thread on Twitter by asking whether or not um, having the, the query in line would help provide some sort of speed boost for using the in syntax. So rather than going away and doing the query and then placing it in there, if we just do the query in line and loop through that uh, variable set. So uh, I'm just going to save this up. While that's saving, uh, I can tell you I went away and um, also timed how long it took the system to just do the query. So I removed all the other code and placed just the query between the start and end brackets. And um, because there's obviously a performance implication of doing that. Uh, and the query was timed at, uh, why is that not saving? Query was timed at uh, 84 milliseconds. Um, so whatever result we get out here, we need to uh, take 84 milliseconds away from that, and that will give us our overall uh, time taken for this method. So because we've changed our signature here, we need to update our signature in the code we're going to run. So we don't need to pass in the list of accounts because uh, the account because we're going to just do the query in line. And if we execute this code now. Know that we can keep the original query. It's not going to make any performance implication on our code because of the way in which we're timing it. Um, and the time taken was 768 milliseconds. So 768 was for the overall piece of code to run. And if we do that, and we took away 84. Um, and that, my maths will tell us, gives us uh, 640. Uh, no, sorry, 682 82, uh, milliseconds. I think that's right. Six, uh, 684 milliseconds. So, 82 milliseconds. 684 milliseconds. Yeah. So, um, so again, a much quicker um, loop than our, uh, our original set. Um, it's a bit slower than either of the other two methods that we've come up with. Um, and does take a bit longer to process, but again, it's a very easy to read syntax, so it's it's a good suggestion out there. So thank you uh, to Andy for uh, asking that question. Um, and the final uh, option we want to go through here is using a custom iterator. So uh, Andrew Fawcett, whose uh, Twitter handle Andy in the Cloud is there, um, suggested that we could use a custom iterator to see whether that was faster in uh, looping through the records. So custom iterator is just a class um, implements the iterator interface for a particular record uh, type, a particular subject type. And we have a method, it must have a method that's called has next, the method that call, uh, called next, the has next must tell us whether or not we do have another item to get uh, off the list and the next method returns that item. And then we've just, I've got custom constructor and things like that just to make it easy to set up. Um, 
An important thing to note about using a custom iterator is that it can only be used in a while loop. You can't use it in a for loop. So this has changed the syntax slightly, so it'll be interesting to see whether this has a, an implication. Um, another thing we're going to have to do here, however, is change the code we're using. So the reason we've got to do this is that every time uh, the while loop runs through, it's going to call this has next method um, and this next method. Um, and obviously in our debug log, that's going to show up as a lot of lines of code. And it's that many, in fact, I can tell you from having run this before, that it blows the debug log size, which is a bit of a problem. So uh, I decided to try and use a limits custom object to just store the limit. However, in doing so, I found that I'd already used up all the data in the org. So that, when we try and insert it, throws an exception that you can't do it because you've got too much data stored. All we're going to do is catch that exception and then throw out our own exception, which just happens to be writing down this CPU time that we stored. Um, it's just a, a way of kind of circumventing uh, the governor limits that we've kind of uh, gone through and you know, circumvent the fact that we don't have a debug log um, available. If you do have a debug uh, system that's coming out too long, I would really recommend as, a, as an idea to try and use a limits class, uh, limits S object. It's a great way to record it if you can't see it in the debug. Um, and if, again, you run out of data or there's some reason you can't insert it or it's throwing an exception, it's a good idea to try and catch that exception and then you can always throw out your own with debugging it. So uh, we've got this uh, same setup here. So if we execute that, this is going to do this method with our new custom iterator. And we'll see how long that takes. One of the things um, that I'll mention while this is processing in the background is heap size. So one of the discussions that was uh, had um, and one of the points that was raised is the fact that we're using heap size to compensate for CPU time, which is completely true by storing these variables locally. Um, when asked about the performance implication of this and you know, the impact this has on the heap usage, um, I was asked why it wasn't mentioned. The reason was that it takes up one extra byte of heap size from my kind of uh, investigation, and I didn't think that was worth mentioning. Effectively, by doing this, you're really you know, using up one extra byte of heap out of six megabytes for synchronous uh, processes or 12 megabytes for asynchronous processes. And I didn't think that was really worth commenting upon um, as a problem. So uh, that was why that wasn't discussed. Again, feel free to do your own testing. Um, I've put a GitHub gist um, or gist that uh, I'll make available um, as a link underneath this uh, in this blog post uh, for you to go through. So this has come back and we can see that it's taken 650 milliseconds um, to run. So we can record that information down here as well. Um, and this gives us a good way of profiling overall the different methods. So uh, once again, we can see that the, the best method we had last time is still our best way of doing it. It's still our fastest by quite a margin. Um, using the in syntax to loop through a locally stored variable is also very quick um, and is a nice way of having easy to read code. We can also um, do either an inline query, which is kind of one way of doing it, or use a custom iterator, and they'll produce similar kind of timed results. Um, both good ways of doing it, uh, however, not as fast as the other methods we mentioned. Um, the custom iterator solution is a very interesting one because um, obviously you have to write a, a fair amount more code um, to get um, any performance implication and any performance boost, and it's not as good as the other area, how, uh, as the other uh, performance boost we've seen. However, um, I'd say that using iterators is something you should do for kind of more complicated uh, mechanisms of looping through things rather than just to try and get a small performance boost here. So that covers off all the different uh, ways of you can uh, ways of looping through records and the performance of these different methods. Uh, if you have any feedback, please uh, tweet to at force.comcast uh, to let us know. Um, we'll be happy to reply and hope you look forward to the next video.